True or false, since we are commanded to love our enemies, we should have love for Satan. This is, um, uh, was Steve's question from last week. Hmm, okay. Well, I guess uh, there's no particular order since Steve's not here to go last. So uh, uh, who's who's eager to speak on that one? Go right ahead. I will. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, we don't know Satan. You can't love somebody you don't know. Uh, we're not supposed to know him. When the devils are being cast out of the gathering demoniac, they said to Jesus, what have we to do with thee, Holy One of God? And it's the same thing. What have we to do with thee? We don't have anything to do with him. And he is, when it says love our enemies, we are to love mankind because God loves them and wants them redeemed. Satan made his choice. He is a declared enemy of God. He has nothing to do with Christians at all. We're not to seek him out. We're not to overtly hate him either. The Bible says that uh, Michael the archangel did not make a railing accusation against Satan, but said the Lord rebuke you. So Michael the archangel actually deferred to the power of God, put Satan in the Lord's hands, not even his own, as powerful as he was. He didn't re personally rebuke him. He didn't take... <coughs> um, any relationship with Satan at all. He deferred him to God in his judgment. So uh, with Satan, you can't love somebody you don't know. We can't pray for his redemption because we know he's beyond that. God knows the end from the beginning. And we are loving our enemies is to so that others see the love of God in Christ in us to be a light so that they will one day come to faith in Jesus and realize how much he loves them. So that's why we love our enemies. Also, because we've been forgiven such a great debt, it's wrong of us not to forgive others after such a great sin debt has been wiped out on our, uh, on our account because of what Jesus did. So loving our enemies has nothing to do with Satan. We don't know Satan. You can't love somebody you don't know. Uh, and you certainly can't show acts of love towards him because we don't interact with him at all so it's he it has nothing to do with us we need to defer him to god's judgment and just leave him alone that's how we should think about him he's a defeated foe under the feet of jesus and we let him deal with him yeah okay man uh all right ben you would like to go next well, it, it, Renee took my uh, took my, my 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 initial thought, which was, you know, a lot of people like to uh, taunt Satan and uh, speak evil of him, and and uh, like like Jude said, you know, we should not uh, we should not uh, give any railing accusation against him. We should simply say, Lord, rebuke you. And uh, in fact, people who do, uh, Jude says, those are people who speak evil of whatever they do not know. So. It's if you if you're you know if you're taunting Satan, uh, you're really acting in a way that you're speaking of things in a way you don't know. But he's a powerful being. He is not to mess around with, as Lisa says all the time. And uh, again, I think any time we encounter any demonic or uh, satanic presence, uh, we simply say, "Lord, rebuke you," or you know, we command him out, command him away in the name of Jesus. Um, and with regards to, you know, we, you could say, well, Jesus said, love your enemy. Do not hate them because uh, he loved us when we were enemies. Um, but at the same time, you know, we know that, you know, I this is something I, I want to do. I haven't done yet, but I want to study out the different uh, words for love in the Bible and how they pertain to different contexts. But, uh, you know, when it says love your enemy, there, and again, there's different kinds of love in the, in the Bible. And. Um, and I, you know, I think what it basically means, you know, love your enemy in terms of, of blessing them. Don't don't, uh, you know, wish cursing, cursings on them. We should, uh, we, we should, you know, we don't return evil for evil. It's only just like, uh, uh, God loved Jacob, uh, but Esau, he hated, we know he didn't hate Esau. It just means he, he didn't bless him in that respect. He didn't, he blessed Jacob. He didn't bless Esau. So in that sense, from that, um, uh, relativity of uh, that, that relative re love and hate, uh, Esau was the hated one, so to speak. And Jacob was a loved one. So, 
Um, again, and, and with Satan, yeah, you know, I mean, Bible says, you know, uh, you know, Paul, uh, uh, encourages the believers. Uh, I can't remember what epistle it is, but he says that he'll soon crush Satan under your feet. I mean, he's our enemy. And, um, and so I, I just think in that respect, in terms of loving our enemy, we're not supposed to curse him. Like it's like Renee said before, you know, we're not supposed to, uh, give a railing accusation or curse Satan. We're simply supposed to say, Lord rebuke you. Um, so I don't think we're supposed to have any, like, you know, love or, uh, you know, <laughs> Or any participation in sin because oh well we're supposed to we're supposed to do what Satan told me to do it because we're supposed to love our enemy you know so I'm going to do what Satan tells me to do uh, I don't think that's the idea at all um, no I think it's it's more of a, like a blessing and cursing type of uh, context and so certainly we're not supposed to bless Satan um, or curse him either because it, again vengeance is God is in God's hand judgment is in, in God's hands not ours hmm okay thank you. I I don't. I can't really think of a whole lot to say about this question. It just seems to me uh, it should be obvious that uh, um, we're, we're loving uh, our enemies. I, I think all that is applying to humanity, as as, as was stated already. But uh, I don't see anything in the Bible that uh, refers to Satan that we're supposed to love Satan and. It also, there are people that continually want to ask the question about, is it possible that Satan could be redeemed? Uh, and so I, I want to know, why is everybody so concerned about Satan as far as, you know, his, his well-being? You know, well, well, maybe we should love Satan. Uh, well, don't you think Satan could be redeemed? Uh, why are we even thinking about that? Uh, um, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't have, can't think of anything more to say about that. How about uh, Heather? What do you say? Um, okay, so this is my opinion. <laughs> but um, I don't hate Satan. I don't love Satan. Um, and to be honest with you, the fact that Lisa is always talking about Jedi mind tricks and the fact that <laughs> I am kind of a, a nerd and a Star Trek and Star Wars fan. Um, the only thing that's going through my mind is the scene where Han Solo tells Chewie to keep his distance. <laughs> Don't look like you're trying to keep your distance, but keep your distance. Um, I, the way that I look at it is this. If you hate someone, and that word hate is such a strong word. If you hate someone, that means you once loved them. In my opinion, stay away. And I love the fact, that, oh my goodness, my child. I love the fact that Ben said, oh my goodness, here we should probably play a different game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love the fact that Ben said, um, the Lord rebuke you. Um, I, I That's something that I have found is really helpful for me. Um I, I know that when Jesus rebuked the the devil, he didn't say I he never said I rebuke you. What he said what he did was he brought up verses and and um he rebuked because of the the verse in context and and where Satan would try and twist the verse, he would bring it out into the right context and and use that verse to rebuke the enemy. So I personally feel like me saying i rebuke you in the name of jesus is a dangerous thing because at that point i put myself before the name of jesus because i've said myself first i've put myself on the line so i don't ever do that i will very very quickly say the lord rebuke you or i will bring up a verse that that relates to what is going on and say it and it's not it's it has that's why it's so important to read your bible because when whatever you put in that's what comes out when you're under pressure so um if if what you're putting in is uh, star trek star wars <laughs> under pressure that's kind of what's going to come out but if what you're putting in is the bible then in a tight spot that's exactly what you're going to come back with just like jesus did he feasted on the Bible. 
He feasted on the word of God. He knew it inside and out. And that's what he spent his time doing. And that's why it came out when he was tempted. Okay, thank you. All right, Sister Lisa. I'm going to keep my answer really short. We'll see. Since we are commanded to love our enemies, we should have love for Satan. In the words of Bishop Bowinkle, hell no nah to the no, no, no. There is no way we're supposed to have love for the devil. He is described as our adversary. Uh, I like what, let's see, uh, Luke, what you said, where he said, why would even anybody, why would you even form that question? I was like, yeah, was, was somebody, I'm not saying it's not a good question to ask because there's a lot of weirdness that's floated out there, but, um, you know, that sounds, you know, like, remember the, what was it, the 10000 or $20,000 pyramid where people would say things and you would go, Things that such and such would say. I'm like, well, that's like things a Luciferian would say because that's not something that uh, I'm a believer. I understand you shouldn't wonder about such matters, but we ought to be able to conclude from the scripture very easily that uh, he is he is the evil one, and that <laughs> there is no good in him. He is not uh, uh, our friend. He is the foe of all of humanity, even the ones who are working for him. He has tricked them. He, Like I said in one of my videos, I said, um, the devil has convinced them that he's just going to eat them last. You know, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, when it comes to uh, love and as Heather pointed out, in, in order to hate somebody, you probably had to love them first. Um, yeah, I said, I don't know the devil well enough to hate him. But when I look at his. Um, Fruits, the destroyer, and what he does, and how he's the enemy of huma humanity, and the evil that he has done, and the evil that he is, him and his fallen ones have put in the hearts of men, um, and teaching them. If if uh, you study the old covenant, even parts of the book of Enoch that shows that the the fallen ones taught men how did man didn't even know man was like you know and some things dumber than a box of rocks they didn't know how to make war in certain ways and all this stuff and he sh showed them the fallen ones showed them how to do all this evil evil stuff like next level stuff that man hadn't even conceived so uh no no uh 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 don't we'll never have love for uh the serpent as, as the Bible says, and it's a perfect description of him. If you haven't done it, unless like it really, really creeps you out to, to look at serpents because my mother can't stand, she can't, her skin starts crawling. But um, I, I went and I just pulled up pictures of serpents one day and just looked at how it's, it's such a cold creature. There's no, it's not like a puppy's eyes. It's not like, you know, any of these other animals. The coldness and the way that it moves and it, that it bites and it poisons you with its bite. And it's just like the perfect description for the devil. So, you know, that's my answer in short. You know, just no. And as Heather said, just no. Or Ben was saying that, you know, you stay away from the devil. It's not he's not somebody you engage. The Lord rebuke you is the perfect answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I don't think anybody would say that we, we are supposed to love evil. And isn't Satan evil personified? All right. Any more from anyone on this one? That's a good point, Luke. <laughs> he literally is evil personified. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've heard people say, uh, one of the viewers was saying, you know, it's not like Satan got a bad rap. Because that's what the Luciferians say. Oh, he just got a bad rap. He's an advocate for humanity. He's the good guy, you know. So, and all the pagan religions did that too, did the flip it, you know, to make God the bad one. And so, uh, yeah, I, I've heard atheists and stuff condemn Christians for saying, well, you'd have to love Satan too, wouldn't you? How is it Christian to hate him? And just ridiculous, unlearned questions, you know, and this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you'll hear these unlearned questions, these twisters to try to refute God's word is true or 
or to condemn a believer. There's all kinds of ways this could manifest. But uh, I think everybody's answers were phenomenal on this tonight. And they were they were all scriptural. So.